welcome. And as I just said, I'm Renee and I'm the Practical Shaman. So I have all of this paperwork here about how powerful this moon casting a shadow across the sun really is. And the truth is, is I'm practical. So when you tell me it's a 33 and it's a master number and you can manifest with your heart's desire, I think all of that's really great. But like most people out there, I want to know what's in it for me. What's in it? What am I going to get this morning by doing this? Why am I here? Why am I taking this time? And so I asked the wind, you know, what is in it for people? And what I was told is that we're in a really polarized place. And we want to think that it's about politics. We want to think that it's about what current affairs. But truly, this polarization has been going on for over 2,000 years. And what you'll find in the um, Winds of Spirit book where I talk about this is that it kind of happened when we had a plethora of gods and we went to one god. You know, one god was right. The rest of the gods were tossed out of the tossed out of the garden and they no longer were valid. And, and as people, we've been trying to find that God again. We've been finding that God for, I don't know, over 2,000 years we've been seeking God. Well, all I know is once I found these winds of spirit, I felt held, I felt protected, I felt like, ah, at last, I can breathe because I know these winds have my back. And every time I doubt it, I get another lesson. Like last week, I did something that was a little bit out of integrity. And we used to have teachers who would tell us, oh, hey, you're being out of integrity to get back in line. I had my Lakota teacher. I had my Four Winds teachers. I had all of these teachers telling me when I was out of integrity, now I have the winds to kick my ass. And it was a silly thing. I, was, I, I took something from a friend of mine's house and then I realized, wow, I had no business taking that. Why do I think I'm so entitled? This work has been working us for the last I think it was two or three months, if I, if I look back where I saw the first post that said, the next few months are primary in order to make those shifts in your life that you really need to make. Today, we have this moon crossing the sun. And in the shaman's world, that's where we get to move into non-ordinary reality. That's where that gap is. That's where we can slide in, take a look, and see what's really going on, and then make a shift there. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We are going to, we're going to work with the south wind because in the middle of the night, the south wind started showing me things. He, the south wind started to show me that there's this shadow. There's a shadow here. And when we dance with that shadow, it's a real tricky, it's a real tricky line to walk. And because of that, I'm inside today. Inside with the door locked, not only inside and the cat's hiding under the bed. And I wanted to say that, oh, hi, Heather, make sure you let anyone into the wind clan who wants to join, please, or anyone else. And that shadow is a tricky place to walk because we think that, um, we think that, you know, we're these light workers and yes, we're working in the light. But when we're working in the light, that polarizes us no different than this monotheistic God that polarizes us to think that the other people are wrong. Well, the other people I'm here to tell you aren't wrong. They have their part of you. And what I've learned about this wind work is the, oh, that's funny. When I talked about the shadow, the work, the screen got dark. Interesting. The, the spirits are here. Like I said, the cat's hiding under the bed. The, the, when we start to think that the other is something different than ourselves, we always find ways to get in trouble with that. I posted a quote this morning about their, about choices. And now I can't even remember what it was, but it was very profound when it woke me up this morning. All right, well, let's get started. So I thought I would tell you, again, I'm going to repeat that the roots of this polarization go way back beyond before your lifetime. This what's going on in the, the US today or the world today is in divine order. It's hard to hold that in our vision that this is divine order to flip ourselves right side over in order that we can grow new, new flowers, new seeds, new seeds of awakening. But we will never grow those seeds unless we 
embrace this darkness of ourselves in order to see that that is me too. That that is me, and, and like even to do something out of integrity and the wind to slap me just almost like a laugh. Like what do you think? Who do you think you're entitled? And we are entitled. We're we're a very entitled society, and this is all about simplifying that. All right. I have my notes because there was just a few things that I thought were really important to say. These winds of spirit, which are all outlined in my book in, that's coming out in February 2018 by Hay House, that's really exciting, is available now for pre-order on Amazon. So we're not going to go fully into what all of these wind characters are, but let me just tell you, the book ended up with 32 winds and another spot for no wind. Now, that is kind of significant because these winds are all creator gods. And so these are aspects of creation. And so, hi Michelle, you're an aspect of creation too. And the thing about wind is if you think about it, the wind, and Melissa's here, the wind that you breathe in, the wind that you breathe out, it goes around the world faster than anything. So to be in right relationship to your shadow is essential here for world peace. And today what we're going to do in this meditation is we're going to look at our polarized feelings because the south wind came and the south wind reminded me about its battle with Jack Frost. Now the south wind, Jack Frost had covered the earth and Sadie's here. Jack, wind, Jack Frost had covered the earth, frosted the earth. People were dying of starvation, people were frigid, people were poor, people were desolate. As you know, as a north wind blows, which might be, if you look at it, might be going on in the world today, there's a north wind blowing, and the south wind has the potential to heal this. Oh, lots of loves on that one. The south wind can heal this. And so the south wind was a baby, a junior wind, uh, not a junior wind, but a, a young man was the south wind in this story, in this native lore. And it could be a young woman, it could be you, it could be your soul, went to battle the north wind. And try as it, it might, what won and melted the, the north wind's cold grasp on the world was the heart. And, and this, this solar eclipse today is calling us to see what's in our heart. What's in our heart? How do we know what's in our heart? We know what's in our heart by what we're feeling. So today we're gonna to look at what are we feeling? And then we're going to, um, we're gonna journey down the tree of life, the, the roots of the tree of life, because I watch what's going on in the wind clan a lot. And lately what's going on is a lot of people have been talking about this tree. So we're gonna travel down these roots and be forewarned. I was told in the middle of the night that that south wind is going to shake you loose. So what you think you're going down to heal might not be the thing that you're really actually going to be, be healing. Just be open to that. Because there's a story, another story, wind story in the winds of spirit called um, What's Stronger, the Snake or the Wind? And it's a Vedic story about the, the wind said, I'm the strongest. You know, we always want to be the strongest. Why? I don't know. I would just like to be peaceful. So the wind and the snake are having a competition. So the snake coils itself around Mount Maru. And the more the wind blew, the tighter the snake coiled itself around the mountain. Finally, they, the wind's blowing so hard and the snake is wrapping itself so tight that the top of the mountain popped off, created another island. This, this, this is the true with us. It's like right now, if you, if you watch what's going on in the news, we're fighting. We're like the snake in the wind and we're not getting anywhere. We're, we're really not. We're, what's going to pop off is hopefully nothing that we don't really want to contend with. So understand that when you start to travel down that route, the, the wind could start to really blow. All right. And, and so, um, we want to see in this meditation, what is it that you're holding on to so tight that you're ready to, to you know, lose half the, the top of yourself in order to hold this, this belief so tight or this feeling so tight. Oh yeah, that got a few likes. And then we're going to go 
after we go through this windstorm, because that's what it's going to be is a windstorm, we're going to find ourselves somewhere peaceful. And in this peaceful place, we're going to do a transaction. We're going to say, all right, I'm willing. Just all I need to do is to be willing to be willing to let go of this peace so that I can then find out where my light really is going to shine bright. And then we're going to take this as a gift. We're going to bring it back up that same tree root because when you go into shaman's journey, you always go back the same tree, the same way you always came. And one time that was really important when I was doing some medicine work and I was, I asked where self-hatred lived in the body and I went deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. I almost got lost. It was so deep. And I could hear that shaman's rattle. I could hear that, I could hear that rattle and it was the one thread that, that kept me going. What's really funny about this rattle particularly is that the other day, my, I, I've been juice fasting for eight or nine days now, and my, my juice fasting chef brought me this ceramic rattle. And it's really funny because our wind whistles are ceramic. And even more special, yesterday, a friend of mine spoke to the maker of these in Spanish for me because we had been connected another way and we'd never spoken. I told him how people were finding his his rattles so magical, I mean his whistles, and he was thrilled and he said he's going to anthropology school because he wants to learn why they're so magical. This was my first wind whistle because I'm never sure what's here. And these are the wind so spirit cards. Why I point those out is because the south wind came directly to me last night and said, you're working with the south wind. And if you just join late, you'll have to watch the beginning to find out why, because there's other people here and I try not to go on too long, but we're gonna get ready to do this journey. Journey. So what I would ask you to do as we move into the journey space is to make sure you have a pad and pencil nearby because sometimes what we see there, we like to say, hey, that didn't happen. One time I had a dismemberment journey and I tried to convince myself for three days it didn't happen. It did happen. What happens in what happens what happens in non-ordinary reality is reality. It's just a parallel universe to where you're sitting right now. So have your pad and pencil ready, and then find yourself hopefully somewhere quiet so you can sit and meditate during this. I'm going to blow the wind whistle. I'm going to call in the four cardinal directions. These cardinal directions. They are the, they order our reality. And again, I go deeply into this, into the book, because I found the cardinal winds were mentioned first on the tablets, which makes me know that they were long around before, before the written word. And this is how we order our experience. So a, a sailor knows you always direct your ship from your own, um, what do you call those, from your own steering wheel, let's say that. You drive your car from your own steering wheel. You work your life from your own body, in your body now. All right, we're gonna get ready to move on into the ceremony part of this. And what I would do is I would ask you now to get yourself comfortable if you, you trust it. And if you're not feeling that comfortable, you can always come back and listen to this later. I, I probably will break out the ceremony part or tell you where it is. and. First, we're gonna call in the directional winds. Then I'm going to lead you in a meditation down the universal tree root. Know that there's gonna be a place where the winds have already warned me they're going to be shaking. Now, for some of you who are new to this, you may think nothing's happening, trust it. You may wake up tonight in a dream. Okay, and the we're gonna go, before we do that, we're going to identify um, what we're feeling in our body about what's going on in the current events because the only place we are is in the current and so when we're in this current how are we going to flow so are we ready to go uh, any questions before I start no let's see oh I'm glad you like how I'm talking about the shadow the shadow is as important as the light and you know it's been since what 1918 since we've had this full solar eclipse so it's been a long time where since in the united states we've been able to dance with this 
And if you're somewhere in another country, no. Remember what I just said, the wind will reach you in a couple of days. So what America is experiencing today, you are going to experience too. It just might not feel as immediate. All right. So I'm gonna journey us with the rattle and blow the wind whistle. Isn't this powerful, Heather? It is, huh? And I'm gonna call in the directions with the wind whistle though, to start. Wind whistlers, do you have your wind whistles? Today we're gonna to start in the, we're going to start in the west so we end up in the south because that's the wind that's gonna be working with us. Got it? So wind whistlers, oh I see you, all right. You all got your wind whistles. All right, so everyone, there's now over 60 wind whistlers out there, more, maybe 70, 75. They're joining us. And some of them in spirit and some of them actually playing their wind whistle. So let's call to the West. And West is Zephyrus, the cardinal wind of the West. That's the Greek wind. Zephyrus. Zephyrus is with us as we holding space in the sky for us as we do this journey. Oh, there's a northwesterly with Cape. We're going to call to the north wind, which again, how appropriate that there's this 34 mile an hour north wind blowing because remember, it's the south wind that meets the north wind to, to do this shadow dance. So I'm not going to turn around so you're seeing my back, but Imagine I'm facing to the north wind and calling to Boreas, the cold north wind that lives beyond the mountain. That's, we want Boreas to join us here today so that we can really see what is dark in us. <laughs> Boreas is laughing. Not laughing at us, but laughing and smiling that we're willing to do this dance. Call to yours the east wind, the wind of new beliefs, new beginnings. East wind is, is, is telling us that we will get back around to the east wind later, but right now we're moving into this, this polarization between the north and the south wind. So the east and the west wind are holding, holding space for your work today. Very, very beautifully so. And now we're gonna call to notice the wind of the south. And as we call to notice, what I would like you to do at home is to Go inside, scan your body from head to toe and see what you're feeling about the current affairs. Feeling, it's feeling, it's not thinking. How are you feeling? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you excited? What feeling is going on about for you right now?
And when you've identified that feeling, just take a note of where is it living in your body? Is it thick? Is it big? Is it colorful? Where is it living? And then close your eyes. And I hope you can hear this, this rattle. It's very subtle, but powerful. And as you close your eyes, see yourself in nature at the base of a tree. And I'm seeing a really, really big tree with big roots. You may see it, you may feel it, you may hear something, you may smell it. Whatever it is, trust. And I want you to see that feeling that that whether it's a ball or a spiky thing I want you to separate that feeling from your body and you can leave your body sitting there and I'm, we're going to start to journey down that tree root and as we journey down you're going to go past the earth and the bedrock. There's a spring of water. And you're going to start to feel the wind that's going to start to blow. Keep moving through the wind. And it's going to reshape this, this, whatever this energetic feeling you're having. It's going to start to reshape it and disfigure it. It's going to maybe dismantle it. But continue down that tree root. You're going into the darkness, like the moon casts a shadow across the sun. It gets darker and darker and darker as the further you go down. And you've got this energetic feeling with you. You are that energetic feeling. And then you're gonna to come to the end of this, this route. And you're going to find yourself in a darkened cavern. This is where the seed of this feeling lives. Is it spacious? Or are all the other Wind Clan members there with you? It might be different for each of you. And examine this feeling. See itself revealing itself to you, maybe as a scroll, as an agreement, as a place of disharmony. And ask the feeling. How is this feeling of mine contributing to the polarization of the world at the moment? And listen for the answer. In non-ordinary reality time, things happen quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to ask for this feeling to be dismantled, to be, so that it can embrace other feelings, the opposite feeling, 
So if you're feeling fear, you can feel love. In this same moment that both the fear and the love live on the same side of the same feeling, the same energetic. I'm going to blow the wind whistle. And I want you to see this feeling actually dismantling, coming apart, moving about in this, in this darkened cavern, disseminating. And as it moves and dissolves, ask, how can I embrace both sides of this feeling, both the fear and the love? What would that look like? What would that gift be to me? What would that gift be that I could bring back to others? Ask in this place for the gift. And then ask what color this energetic would look when they're combined. What would be the color or the texture or the intensity? How will I know when I put this back in my body that this is the, this is the integrated feeling? And this is the gift you're going to bring back. And once you have that, I invite you to start going back up that tree root, the tributaries of it. And remember, I, I would like you to come back the same way you went down, but you're feeling different, so it might look a little different. Note that. Is it different? Have the winds calmed down? And you're going back up the tree root. And right before you come out from that tree, I'm going to invite all of the wind whistlers to clear off any of the energy that we don't want to bring back into, into this space, into this time that is now. Help me clear any debris that might have tried to come back up that tree root with us. I'm speechless. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Take a few moments now to, um, to, to jot down in your jour journal what you experienced, what was the gift, what you brought back. And one thing I, my teachers always taught me is that this is sacred. This is yours. You don't have to jump out and share it with everybody. You can hold that, you know, you can put it into a piece of artwork today. You can carry it with you. And, but please write it down because tomorrow 
I would love people to come back onto the Win Clan page and share what their gift was, what their experience was, what they let go of. Um, I don't know, it's bringing tears to my eyes. I, I'm feeling really emotional. Is anyone else feeling really emotional? I guess we invited the South Wind in and, and I'm just really <sighs> grateful. I mean, I, <laughs> when Spirit asked me to write this book, Winds of Spirit, I thought to myself, like, everyone hates the wind. Who's going to read this? And yet this tribe has grown another... 40 people this week and I've come to learn that this wind work is really really simple and really profound uh, I'd be res I'd be hesitant uh, I would not be my normal self if I didn't tell you that um, this fall we're gonna go way deeper with this wind work and it's gonna start a, a program and it's a five-week finish the year strong program and this is, if you enjoyed this, if you thought that this was useful, I'm gonna open up the doors to it and you can start to register. And anyone who's on this call, I'm gonna give you a really, really special offer. If you buy 11 books and show me the receipt from on, on the Amazon place, um, you're gonna get free, you're gonna take that receipt and it's gonna give you access to the five week program, which will be a live call every week with me and it's going to be um, intense work. It's not like, oh, I just signed up and I didn't do it. I want people who are committed to transforming and to finish their year strong, ready to go into hibernation to birth something new next year. My name is Renee and I'm the Practical Shaman. And I think I'll go cry for a little bit. Um, you're, you are so awesome. I mean, I, I, this is way beyond my wildest dream. And I want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, for supporting this work and for believing in this work and I was telling somebody last night that this work teaches you you don't go to a guru I'm not a guru I've done a lot of work but I'm not a guru the wind is going to teach you and if you want to have a direct experience of God um, this is the work this is this is the work that that I have found after searching for 30 years that God, I'm gonna be 60 soon um, that is going to propel my life and to stay on course for hopefully the rest of my life. So have a wonderful, awesome day. Thank you all for being here. And you just, you just the bomb. <laughs> all right. I love you all.